Ladies and gentlemen, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of inspiration and realness. Also, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of positivity, personality, and fun. This is Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977, and now the perpetrator of these shenanigans, Big Beefy E himself from his Big Beefy Man Cave in New Bedford, Massachusetts, Mr. Shenanigans himself, and the two-time Chilling 3000 2022 End of the Year Awards winner, Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, sir. Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977, episode 799. We're one episode away. I made a promise that we will, I will reach 800 episodes by the time, by the, by the time tonight ends, and it will be 800 episodes, and once, once 800 episodes hits, man, it's a whole new clean slate. Starting tomorrow, as we'll be celebrating one year being in this room. One year ago. It's been a long road to get here, but finally the road has been, uh, the journey has been complete one year ago. So this is great. Um, I'm really excited. Don't know about you, but this, this month of August, this year, compared to last year, you know, it seems like summertime, always crazy things have always happened. And this year, this year is a lot more crazier than last year. Last year, I ended up with a new room. This year, however, a lot of a lot of things have happened. I'll probably address that when we reach the end of August when I do my state of shenanigan address. So, um, really, really stoked about this. Really, um, it's like I said, it's a huge journey, a, a, a big journey. It's like it's it's about to be complete. I really don't know how how to say it. It's just it's been insane. Let me tell you, I'm just totally just woo you know <laughs> up and down around town it's like roller coasters <laughs> or like driving on the cobble streets of streets of union uh cobblestone streets of union street here in the bedford <laughs> you know, like whoa what the heck eric you okay oh i'm fine <laughs> All right, um, this is the seventh edition of Big Beefy E's Boston Sports Beat, which is, I talk about all the things that are happening um, happening in New England sports, the top four teams, that would be, um, uh, the top four teams, that would be, uh, you know, uh, the top uh, four teams, actually the four main teams of the of the, of the four teams of New England's uh you know, New England sports, that would be, um, you know, uh, and just, uh, you know, um, like the Red Sox, the Patriots, uh, the Bruins, and the Celtics. You know, um, I was kicking off with the Celtics. Nothing much has been um, happening um, for, that, for that team. Um, just, uh, and, uh, and I, I'm telling you now, this was uh, uh, this was even crazy, to say the least. Uh, let's talk about the Bruins, though. Uh, the Bruins lost two main players to retirement. First, the the, the captain of the Bruins, um, Patrice Bergeron. Uh, I I know for a fact that my pastor and his family had the honor of meeting him, which uh, meeting him, which uh, I even asked uh, my pastor's wife the other day. Um, and it wasn't like meeting Patrice Bergeron. She says she feels awesome, and and I said you're kind of you know because uh, I saw the pictures on uh, the picture on Facebook, and she said oh, you know he was on skates and all that. He was a pretty tall dude when he was on skates. That could be the uh, main reason why. Uh, yeah, he officially announced his retirement after tw almost twenty years with the Bruins, and I gotta tell you, it you know he wanted to be with his family. You know I can understand that. I mean it's kind of sad now because the Bruins is. We got off to a humongous loss, the first round loss, to the team that eventually won the Eastern Conference, and that would be, um, and went to the Stanley Cup. That would be the Florida Panthers, and uh, I'm like, you know, and, and that big uh, victory over the Boston Bruins did propel them to that. But they end up losing to the Vegas Golden Knights, who won their first Stanley Cup championship. Uh, so congratulations to the Vegas Golden Knights. So yeah, and another Bruin, another ma uh, major player in the Bruins organization, Mr. David Krejci, uh, also announced his retirement following Patrice Bergeron. So I don't know how the Bruins are going to uh, recover 
from those the loss of two great players to retirement. I mean, after spending great careers with the Bruins. So I think, uh, you know, and, you know, it's going to be tough on the Bruins to try to recover after having a great regular season, becoming the, the, the high, you know, team with the most wins in NHL history, the best record in NHL regular season, but only to get, only to get dropped in the first round of the playoffs. So, so, and now you lose Bergeron and Craig G to retirement. It's the next man up uh, mentality. It's like Brad, Brad Marchand will have to step up as the team captain for the, uh, you know, you know, uh, so as the team captain. So uh, this will be, uh, <coughs> so, uh, <laughs> so I'm uh, just, uh, Mm. 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 So that's that's something to yeah. So I yeah I apologize for that. Um. <laughs> so. So, yeah. Uh. All right. Yeah. Sorry. Get I get just I get easily distracted. So anyways, check it out. Um. So what's about what I was to say? Yeah. So it is going to be very tough uh, as, uh, for the Bruins. So recuperating from the first round loss to the, uh, to the losses of two of the biggest um, players um, in the Bruins organization, biggest All Stars legends, um, to um, by a retirement. That's going to be something. Um, also, um, yeah. So that's going to be. Right, so, so that means Brad Marshawn will have to step up to the plate. I'm sure he's going to be named team captain for the Bruins, but who, you know who who knows for sure. So uh, let me. Uh, so let's go on with the Patriots. The Patriots. Well, they. Uh, I didn't think this was going to happen, but it did happen. Uh, even though they lost what 20 to nine to the Houston Texans, they're playing the Packers tonight uh, in the preseason uh, preseason matchup. So I'll probably have to check out uh, check on that. Um, but they acquired. Uh, running back Ezekiel All Star, uh, three time Pro Bowler Ezekiel Elliott to a one year six million dollar deal. Uh, that is, you know, just for one year, uh, him being a Patriots for one year, this is a huge opportunity for the Patriots offense to really, really shine in this case. Uh, many people are saying this is a two headed dragon of the uh, running backs with uh, Ramondre Steve Stevenson and Ezekiel Elliott. This is going to be very interesting to say the least, and it looks like. Um, you know, looks like Ezekiel Elliott is bought into the mission statement of the New England Patriots after having a chat with Bill Belichick and stuff and such. And I, I got to tell you, I did not expect this to happen. I'll be totally honest with you. When I heard, oh, Ezekiel Elliott's talking to the Patriots and all, I know they missed out on DeAndre Hopkins. So this is a huge... Uh, so the Patriots uh, organization said, well, we missed out on Hopkins. We'll try to... And we, if we missed out on Dalvin Cook, we'll try to get... Um, Ezekiel Elliott. So that's a huge, huge deal for the New England Patriots. Hopefully it will work out for them when the regular season starts next month. And, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, uh, so it's going to be, uh, so one more, uh, thing we're going to talk about is the, uh, Boston Red Sox. Um, uh, I, you know, so the Boston Red Sox, let's talk about them, oh, wait a minute. And let's see. The Boston Red Sox, as you know, I'm going to try to. Uh, uh oh. And uh, we're going to. Okay, we're going to talk about the Red Sox. I know we talked a little bit about it now. Um, the, um, they, the Nationals took two or three against Boston this past weekend, as you know. Uh, they took, after t uh, Red Sox took two or three against the Tigers at Fenway. And basically uh, two or three against the Royals at Fenway. So, uh, actually three or four, excuse me. Three out of four games they won. Uh, the Blue Jays, the Blue Jays kind of swept the Red Sox in Fenway, kind of dominated. The Mariners took two or three. 
The Red Sox went to the Bronx. They won 8-3 to yesterday. Again, they win today 8-1. to A grand slam by Lu- Luis Urias and a two-run shot by Connor Wong. And Rafael Devers hits a, one, uh, a solo shot. And I'll tell you what, you know, old, old spider, spider tack boy himself, Garrett Cole, did not even stand a chance. And that means if the Red Sox, you know, they're going at it 135 tomorrow against the Yankees. If they beat the Yankees, you're talking about this. The Red Sox may end up staying out of the basement of the American League East. Now, you know, and they and they got the defending World Series champion Astros with Jesse Ortiz. And a, a, in a four-game series with Jesse Ortiz and I, that would be very interesting for sure. And then to come back to Fenway for a three-game series against the Dodgers and to and the World Series champ, Defending World Series champ, the Astros to round out the month of uh, to round out the month of August. So you're talking about a couple of uh, playoff rematches. Uh, but, you know, you get the Wor- World Series champ Astros for four, three uh, at Fenway, and then Astros come the World the defending World Series champs. The Astros come in for three more at Fenway's old seven game home stand. Then they go to Kansas City for a three uh, for a three game, and then. Going up against a very powerful race. And like I said before, the American League East has been flipped upside down. I mean, you think about it. Usually, in the earlier years, it was the Red Sox and Yankees battling out for ALE supremacy. While Toronto usually stays in the middle of things. While Baltimore and Tampa Bay were at the bottom. This year, it's a little differently. It seems like the Orioles are trying, are going to, try to run away with the AL East right now. And Tampa Bay not far behind. They were Tampa Bay was dominant until the injuries started happening. And it's affecting them a lot. Um... And also, I think the uh, situation, the domestic uh, abuse for Wander Franco, that, uh, no, I don't, no, not the domestic, uh, I will not discuss what Wander Franco was up to, and because it would be uh, be very inappropriate, but all I know is it's affected the Rays, and that's probably what, I think that distraction is what affected the Rays to plummet down to second place in the American League East. Red Sox trying to go for a wild card. This is an opportunity for the Red Sox to strike while the iron's hot. With the race um, t- plummeting a little bit, and, and so is Toronto. The Red Sox can have a chance to try to escape um, fourth place and try to jump into the wild card race. We'll see what happens. Um, if you know, I'm looking for a sweep against the Yankees. I'm hoping that happens. So we shall see. We shall see. And it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm hoping, you know, I'm looking forward to see what the Red Sox can do. They won 8-1. to one. I know Masataka Yoshida's been hitting the ball pretty good, too. You know, he'll probably make a strong case for rook, AL Rookie of the Year. We'll find out if he does get that. I don't know. But uh, we shall see. So, that is all the time we have on this show. Episode 799 of Eric Lee Machine Shenanigans of 1977 is complete. Big Beefy East Boston Sports Beat number 7. And on the next episode, it's number 800. We're going to do AEW Collision Fight for the Fallen 23. So, that's the case. So, I will see you guys later. And uh, until the next episode comes rolling around, Mr. Announcer, take us home. That is all for today's episode of the show. This is Mr. Lima speaking for Eric Lima's shenanigans of 1977. A big beefy E, do it for Bob Saget production. And in association with a sweet both for raving dingleberries, telepictures, and distribution. Thank you for watching another great episode of Eric Lima's Shenanigans of 1977. Until the next episode, goodbye for now. Don't forget to subscribe to the Demon Network for great more content like this one. 